It's kind of hard to believe that we're already in week 11 in the 2016 NFL regular season. The season's just flying by fast. Teams are on big winning streaks. Teams just desperately need a win right now, and teams just need to have a strong finish to the season. So, these week 11 NFL predictions, there are a lot of matchups that stick out to me this week. But I'm still going to make a prediction for each and every them, each and every matchup. Let's start with the Thursday night game. The New Orleans Saints taking on the Panthers. The Saints are trying to recover from that heartbreaking loss against Denver. They thought they had the game won, but a blocked extra point they got ran back for a two point for two points. That is what really cost New Orleans. And plus, the Denver defense got two interceptions off Drew Brees. And also, one or two fumble recoveries as well. And the Denver defense just feeds. They just feast off turnovers. And the Panthers, they've fallen to 3-6. and six. This Panthers team just looks defeated at this point. But they can still win the NFC, th- NFC South. I mean, it's still there. But I'm picking the Saints to win this game. I just think that there's just so many issues with the Panthers secondary. I mean, it's... <clears throat> Ever since they got rid of Josh Norman, it's just been a miserable position in the secondary position. That's why I had in the mock draft earlier, a couple of weeks ago, I had him going with Jalen Tabor, the corner out of Florida. So Drew Brees will have a field night on this Panther secondary. We got the Steelers versus the Browns. The Steelers had another heartbreaking loss last week. The Steelers lost the Cowboys inside the last 10 seconds of the ball game. It, led, it was a face mask that led to a big run by Ezekiel Elliott to win the game for the Cowboys. But, they're, but they get the Browns this week. And the Browns, they are winless this year. And I think that's going to continue as the Steelers will win. But Cleveland should be patient, though. Because <clears throat> this is Hugh Jackson's first year. I wouldn't... Imagine they would get rid of Hugh Jackson if it was an 0-16 season, but things are possible. I mean, the 49ers got rid of their coach last year after one year, so anything's possible. Ravens versus the Cowboys. I think this is going to be a really competitive game, although I think the Cowboys are going to win this game. I think the Ravens will really push them really hard, kind of like what the Steelers did last week. But I just think the Cowboys win behind, behind Ezekiel Elliott again this week. I mean, he's, it looks like he's going to be Rookie of the Year. But the season he is having, I mean, it's just once in a decade. Jaguars versus the Lions, and the Lions are very shockingly in first place in the NFC North due to the struggles with the Vikings and the Packers. But they get a Jaguars team who many thought could make the playoffs this year. But their talent just isn't utilized again this year, but... I think this will be another hard fight game, but I think the Lions are going to pull it out on top. I just think Matthew Stafford has something to prove this year, considering I was really on the case last year that this is going to be Matthew Stafford's final year in Detroit. So I'd like him to get another win. All right. <clears throat> kind of a crapshoot kind of a game. The Tennessee Titans take on the Indianapolis Colts. I mean, the Titans just... Turned Green Bay into mincemeat last week. And the Colts, they turned the Packers into mincemeat the week before that. So both these teams have turned the Packers into mincemeat. So this is kind of a tough game to predict, but I'm going to pick the Titans to win. I just think the Titans have just been really hot lately. I just think that Marcus Mariota will make the plays, and Andrew Luck will, not, will continue to not get the support that he needs. All right, Bills versus the Bengals. <clears throat> I'm picking the Bengals to recover from the Monday night heartbreaker. I mean, the Bengals had some chances to win the game, but they did not. Now they can get a win. I mean, they've been they really need a win as well. I mean, many teams need a win, but they're just one of them. Buccaneers and Chiefs. The Chiefs have been rolling. I think they're going to continue rolling. Although, what I'm interested to see in this matchup. Is Mike Evans going up against the Marcus Peters or the Eric Berry? I think that's going to be a huge matchup. That's going to be a huge difference in the game. 
So if the Buccaneers want to win this game, you got to find Mike Evans. I mean, he's just your security blanket. I mean, <coughs> just a really dynamic wide receiver. All right, Bears and the Giants. Not really much of this game. I think the Giants are going to win this one. I mean, I think the Giants, I think this is out their momentum right now. I think they are on. Something's telling me the Giants are starting to try to make a Super Bowl run here. I mean, Odell Beckham was was really talking about how this te- how that team's looking forward to February fifth in Houston. So something might tell me that the Giants they got something cooking and they're not going to show us that yet. But I think it's I think it's starting, but I think it's already started, but we haven't realized it yet. And by the time you realize it, it'll be too late. It'll be Super Bowl Sunday. So I think the Giants will win. But as far as I'm going to the Super Bowl, I can see it now. Because out of their six wins on the year, they have only won by a total of 21 points. Cardinals and the Vikings. Vikings actually need a win so badly. I mean, the Vikings have just really sunk it up ever since that 5-0 and start. But I think the Cardinals are going to win this one. I, I just like David Johnson to be the difference of this one. I just think... I think the Cardinals have been trying to find their winning ways lately, and I think they've been doing it better than Minnesota has, obviously. I think this will be a hard-fought matchup. I wouldn't be surprised if we saw a low-scoring game. Maybe this game could even get defensive. I could see that happening, too. Maybe a low-scoring, like maybe 13-10 to 10 kind of game. All right, Dolphins and the Rams. The Dolphins are riding a winning streak, and the Rams coming off kind of a 9-6 96 mediocre win against the Jets. But the Jets started Bryce Petty in that one. And it was announced today that the Rams will finally hand Jared Goff the keys to the offense. We've been looking forward to that all season long. I was kind of going to say that if the Rams were not going to play Jared this week, they better just call it a season and they might as well just look into the next season. But they are finally giving Jared Goff the keys. To this offense. I still think the Dolphins are going to win. I just think that Dolph- the Dolphins secondary. It has just been hot. It has been showing no mercy the last couple of weeks. Especially the running game led by Jay Ajayi. It has shown no mercy at all. <clears throat> These Dolphins are starting to run. I mean I was. I was watching a video by JTWWE. Really great guy. You go look at his stuff. He is saying that the Dolphins. They're not done yet. They have got a lot more to prove. And I'm starting to believe that. I'm starting to become a believer in this Dolphins team. I like him to get this huge win against the Rams. I like him to take to turn Jared Goff into mincemeat. I mean, don't be surprised. This is like a 14-plus point victory for the Dolphins. Patriots 49ers. Not much to talk about. 49ers. They have not had a good year. And I was and there was a comment last week. I forgot who that was from. But if it wasn't for the Week One win against the Rams. The 49ers would be the worst team in the NFL. It wouldn't be a question. So I'm going to pick the Patriots to win, even though there's a possibility that Gronk may not play. He has some injury going on that's kind of this, that's kind of um, undetermined at this point. Right, Eagles and the Seahawks. And this is going to be a great matchup. This is the one. This is one that sticks out to me. The Eagles coming off a huge win against the Atlanta Falcons. Yes, DZ's Eagles defeated the Atlanta Falcons. But it was a really hard fight game. I mean, the Falcons' defense, they, you just don't know what to expect out of the Falcons, like especially defensive-wise. Because defensively, they have not done well in the last four years. And the Seahawks are coming off that big Sunday night victory against New England. And the Seahawks are back in... The home at the home crowd back in the 12th man. This is going to be Carson Wentz's first real road test going into the 12th man. The loudest, probably either the most loudest or the second most loudest in the NFL. That could be a debate because it's down to the Seahawks Stadium and the Chiefs Stadium. It's down to those two for the loudest in the NFL. And this is going to be the huge road test for Carson Wentz, and I. I like him to struggle. I mean, I think the Seahawks' defense, a legion of boom. I think they're going to pick off Carson Wentz three times in this game. So I'm going to pick Seattle to win. I'm going to pick him to win huge. I'm going to say 27-13. 
right? Packers and Redskins. Now, the Packers are one of those teams that just desperately needs a win to get back into contention. I mean, they have just really, really not have, they haven't done well all season. Their secondary is banged up. I mean, major players in their defense is banged up. Randall Cobb's been injured and, and not injured at some points. Eddie Lacy's been injured all year. I mean, James Starks has been injured. I mean, they've had Niall Davis for like two weeks, but then the then released him. The Chiefs signed him again. Just it has just been a disaster for the Packers this year, and and many people, including myself, thought the Packers were supposed to have the easiest schedule of anybody in the NFL. I mean, I even said Priest and the Packers could at least go fifteen and one, but just nothing has gone right in Green Bay. I mean, there are Packers fans that are. And even regular NFL fans are calling for Mike McCarthy's head in Green Bay. Although the only thing that's the only the only silver lining for the situation for the Packers fans is this is kind of what was happening a couple of years ago when they won the Super Bowl. I mean, many thought they weren't going to make the playoffs. I mean, they that got they got hot at the right time. They started peaking at the right time. They won the games. They got hot and eventually won the Super Bowl. So that's the only thing that's backing up these Packers right now. But I'm going to pick the Redskins to win this one. I just think it's going to be interesting to watch Jordy Nelson and Randall Cobb going against Josh Norman. I think I think we're going to see another chess in how good Josh Norman really is. But I think the Redskins are going to do just enough on offense to win the game. Because the Packers' defense has just been non-existent for the last three years. All right, Texans and Raiders, the last matchup of the week. A Monday night game. This is in Mexico City, which I'm really excited to see a game in Mexico City, because I just think that NFL games outside the United States, it's just exciting for the NFL. It's just, it's just bringing the NFL to new cultures. I mean, there's always three games a year where they go to London. That excites me. It may be early in the morning, but it's worth seeing. It's worth seeing the highlights for. Because how exciting it really is. It, I mean, bringing the culture to the NFL, I mean, it's really exciting. I think that we should at least, that every NFL team should at least have one game each year they go outside the United States. I mean, we can have some teams go to Mexico City. We can have some teams go to London. We can have some go to Canada. We can maybe have some go to, maybe some go to Germany as, because Maurice Bowringer, someone that got drafted, a guy, a wide receiver that got drafted by the Vikings in the fifth round in this, fifth or sixth round of years, this year's past draft. I forgot which one. It would just, it would probably just bring more attention to the NFL all throughout the world if we brought like teams like, if we brought Tom Brady to Canada or Tom Brady to the UK. Or if we brought like the Cowboys to Mexico City. That would just, that would probably excite the whole country of, of, Mexico, of Mexico or England or Canada. That would just be exciting. So I think... I think that's something the NFL should really consider. Having one, having each NFL team play one game outside the United States each season. But I'm gonna pick the Raiders to win this one. I just think that I just think the Raiders they got something to prove this year. I mean, I mean they have just dominated this year. Many thought they're gonna go to the playoffs, and they're and they're kind of heading in that direction right now. They probably be, they'd be in a wild card position, but it's just kind of. Kind of hard to see because we're getting toward the end of the year. Teams are starting to get hot at the right time. Others start to go on the decline. But I think the Raiders are just enough in this game. Mark or Michael Crabtree, huge difference makers. That is going to do it. If you're keeping score home, I got the Saints, Steelers, Cowboys, Lions, Titans, Bengals, Chiefs, Giants, Cardinals, Dolphins, Patriots, Seahawks, Redskins, and Raiders all winning this week. <coughs> Games that I would put money on would be the Seahawks over the Eagles. That's a huge one. Another one I put money on, Cowboys over the Ravens. And then I would also put the Cardinals over the Vikings. And Redskins over the Packers. So those are my four money picks this week. I'm going to try doing that regularly from here on out. But go ahead, like, subscribe to the channel, share this with your friends, family, whoever you know. Also share on your social media accounts. We have reached 500 subscribers. But we can still keep going strong. Let's aim for higher goals. Anyway, that's going to do it.
have a great day, everybody. I'll see you for the next video. It will be the college football playoff ranking reaction. That will be in a little bit. So I'll see you then.